Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is about this head. This head being a Dart Pro One, uh, 310cc big block Chevy head. Now I've done some work on it and I'll show you the before and after so you can see how much it improved and where it improved from. And I'll get to show you some of the features of this head. Now I'm gonna start off by saying this. This is a, uh, one of the smaller big block Chevy heads. It's a rectangular port head. Um, in this CC size, in the 24 degree, the only one I know that's about the, that's in this ballpark is the AFR 305. This one's a, the dark version and it's a 310. And it's about the same size. And I mentioned that because those two would compete. You might say, well, Brodus has some stuff. They do, but they're like the BB2 line and that'd be a 26 degree head and it would have a conventional chamber and not so much like these 24 degree chambers. So it's not really in the same area. But anyway, let's talk about this head. From the factory, it has a 225 intake valve and a 188 exhaust valve. This one was an older one, at least as far as I could tell, and it had been bowl blended. Now, I didn't take any pictures before, and I should have, but the head was dirty, and I didn't think it was an a good representation of a brand new head to show you. Um, but I am showing you some things that I did to improve it but it was hand bowl blended. And I think the newer ones are CNC bowl blended on both intake and exhaust. And um, that was a clear div giveaway. The head itself, and this is a dart thing, and this is my opinion. I, I don't have a way to verify it, although I thought I've seen it on the back of the heads. I think they're made with a different alloy than most other brands. I think it's actually a T355, and you can feel free to correct me in the comments as opposed to most others being a T356. And I point this out because as you're grinding this head, if you're to grind some dart heads, you can tell that they definitely grind differently than say Brodux, AFR, or Trick Flow. Um, they're harder. So what I mean by that is you could tell whenever you're using a burr, the size of the sliver that's coming off. And on this one, I had to give more force into it and the slivers coming off are smaller. And I thought, well, it's just a burr, but I used that same burr on another head after these, a Brodix one, and it came off just fine with bigger slivers. So the alloy, I think, is harder. Now, that T355, if that's what this is, typically it's a harder alloy, but more brittle. Um, however, that's an opinion I'm not 100% sure on that, but I just think that's it. Feel free to correct me in the comments. However, one thing for sure I could tell you, and this is not an opinion, it does grind, I guess it is opinion, it grinds rougher than any other aluminum heads that I've had. In other words, it takes more time. Now, here's all that's been done. This customer sent it in and said, you know, um, I'd like to have your full port job done, but I know it's going to take too long. Could you just do a mild, mild, mild job? And that's what I've done. So I'm going to show you what I did the before and after flow numbers as well. First thing, it needed a new valve job, which it got. It got my... Uh, my second most aggressive 45 degree valve job. This is the same valve job that I use on my um, Profiler small block Chevy heads. And it got a 45 uh, radius exhaust valve job as well. And that's what it got, one. Two, only thing I did was some bowl work. So you could tell where this ends. And it's a little bit rougher here, a little bit better here. The bowl itself, I increased it um, to the diameter from, I can't remember what it was before, but I could tell you what it is now. It's 2.2. Um, inches across so if you here's your guide if you go straight across this way or perpendicular to the guide you'd measure 2.2 on every single one of them which is an increase and i don't remember exactly how much it increased from but that's what i went to now is that as big as it could be no if i was fully the port in the head i probably would make it you know a little bit larger but i'm not so i didn't also um this guy and this is something i haven't mentioned enough at this guy's racing in altitude so if you um look at altitude on um Heads wise go, one of the bigger things you could do is overhead an, an engine that runs at altitude. What I mean by that is um, the higher you go in altitude, the air is less dense. So if you put in a big old port, it's gonna, it doesn't do as well. You can get away with a smaller port and it's not as likely to back up and flow because of the density of the air. Now, of course, that part is my opinion, but I, it seems to have bared out. So typically, if you have a higher altitude, you go with a smaller CC head and then um, also try to increase your compression ratio too. That's just a little bonus. But anyway, so he wanted to keep it smaller, so he's keeping it smaller anyway. So valve job, did the bowl, the throat's at 91%, and then the big thing is I redid the short side, um, more laying it back and widening it out some, not a gigantic about, 
but definitely laying it back some and whiting it on all of them. And you can kind of tell. I didn't do a dramatic change in for what they were. But I mean, a huge, huge difference from what they were because I wasn't fully poured in the head. So I wanted to point that out. As far as the exhaust did, all I did was just simply blend in the valve job, did increase the throat at all, and just left it what it was. My intake, of course, got more. Got the bigger bowl, the bigger throat, and we did the short side. Not on the exhaust. The chamber work, the reason why it looks rougher is because this was just really, I only meant to blend out the valve job. When the valve got job got done, it left a ridge right through here where the top cut cuts. And I know from experience that having a ridge will kill flow. So I blended that out and just blended it all this way. Did I try to make it as best as possible? No, it left, of course, some shadowing because it wasn't that big of a deal. The biggest airflow difference was here, but I didn't want to just leave it looking like that. So it looks like the chambers are all done, but it's really just something quick. This did get done. He asked me, and the customer inscribed the line there so it would match up with his intake. And so I just made these larger. This part really has nothing to do with the airflow itself. I'm going to warn you on that. But it does match his intake much better. So that's what's been done. Let's see what it actually did for the numbers before and after. All right, here are the numbers. First thing I want to talk about is this was flowed on a 4310 bore. And the reason why is because it's going on a 496. So that's the bore size that it's B, so it's flowed on that. No exhaust pipe was attached. Uh, a lot of companies flow the exhaust with the exhaust pipe. I don't. I, I just don't flow on that. And this was on my Sains Digital 680 bench. I didn't flow it on the Superflow. I use this, the Sains because that's where most of my data is based off of. It's also more conservative. So let's get started. This right here, cylinder one, is actually the long port, which is the one most advertised. Most companies will advertise the flow numbers on the big block Chevy heads from the long port. And I've gone through this before, but I'm going to go through it again really quick. The big blocks have two ports. They have a long port. See how long it is? And this is the short port. These are the two that got flowed. They enter the cylinder in different ways. So this one, of course, is going more towards the center. This one's actually shooting it right towards the wall. The short port usually flows worse. That's the reason why they don't advertise it. So this is the stock long port. And to be quite honest with you, it's very disappointing. 257 at four, that's my number I really care about. And also 329. At six, which happens to be where it peaks out, and if you notice, it pooters out and gets worse and goes 313 at one. You can tell it has some air stability issues because it backs up on flow. Now, because the port size is so small, that might have something to do with it too. Also, the steepness of the short side. In other words, the air is trying to ramp the short side. Anyway, the point is that one's that's pretty disappointing. It it just it just is. But this one's even worse. This is the short port stock. If you look at it. If you notice, the 400 number is much better than the long port. And you're like, wait a minute, I thought you said the short port flows worse. It usually does, but in some points it could flow a little bit better. As you can tell here, it actually was better than the long port. But then if you look at six, it's way off. And it, unlike the long port, it keeps flat, climbing and flow, peaking at 307 at one. And not that great. Here's the exhaust. Exhaust went 283 at peak, 181. Uh, at 400 so not bad for the exhaust here's what the ported stuff did and you can see what i've done not fully hogged out gone crazy nothing this is the port of the long port so you're comparing this one to number one because they're the same port just modified so we went from a 142 to 151 at two let's just do four 257 to a 266 that's a pretty good gain at 5, 305 through 311, pretty good there. 600, not so much though. 329, just to 334, so maybe 5 CFM. However, look what it does at 7. 355 compared to 322. That's a gigantic gain. This guy, by the way, is running a 738 lift. He's going to fill this for sure. That's a huge gain. Now, does it keep flowing? Uh, up to 8, and then it starts dropping off. And this has to do that it's because it's not fully ported. It really needs more area and being just pocket ported, these are really good results. But if I fully ported it, it would keep climbing. It just isn't. So for that, pretty good. Huge gains if you look at it, 312 to 347. You could tell that's a lot of air. It's moving like no one gets to one inch. This helps carry the power. So definitely gonna make more power there. It flows better in the lower lifts too, it's good. Here's the short port ported. So you compare them to that one. 
270 at one at four to 270, didn't really gain anything. Uh, at 600, it went from 292 to 319. So a pretty good gain there, pretty good. And then if you keep looking all the way, 346 to a 307 and you know, 40, yeah, almost 40 CFM gain, 39. That's a pretty good gain there on the on this side too. I know you're still think same thing. You're thinking one inch of oblift and what helps carry. Oh, you can even look at 600, you know, from a 292 to 319. That's a gigantic 332 to a measly 296. So huge gains there. The exhaust side, remember, the only thing that's really been done is just valve drop and blend, but it also picked up. I mean, look, 181 to 195, good. Peak gained about nine, eh, about eight. All right, math right, yeah, eight. So, eight or seven. Anyway, good gains there, for especially for the amount of work done. So valve job, blend that, and you're good. And you might say, why don't you do more work on the exhaust? Because it's enough exhaust flow for what this thing's doing. So, overall, um, these are definitely things you could do. Go to your machine shop that's got a some idea of what they're doing with the airflow and has a five angle valve job done on these. Um, and then you could do this work easy. Bowl, make it 2.20. Throat's 91%. I don't know what that is top of my head. Just take 0.91 times 2.25. You'll have that. And then, um, you know, widen and lay back your short side some. And just blend in the valve job on the chamber. This is stuff you guys can do. I, besides the valve job, you'll have to pay someone to do that most likely. Do that and you'll be golden. All right. Thanks for sticking around for this video. Hope you guys got something out of it. If you have questions about this, let me know. If you're wondering why I don't have more dart heads on my and my channel it's because i just don't get as many in um i'm sure if more were here i'd probably have more I, i'd say probably 15 years ago it might have been the other way around because there was dart was everything you had dart iron eagles were everywhere dart pro ones were seemed like they were everywhere so but things have kind of shifted so anyway thanks for watching you guys take care